Wild Card Weekend continues here on CBS. One of these teams will be eliminated from the postseason picture today. Holcomb on the move. Going deep. End zone. Wide open. Touchdown. Seconds to play. It looks like the Steelers will rush. Well, they have two down linemen and now a third. Holcomb throwing. Complete inside the 30-yard line. Looking for the out-of-bounds marker. And he got there. But we're out of time. This play ended the Cleveland Browns' last playoff appearance. This was January 2003. For any of you who have paid attention to the NFL, the Browns have been, for the most part, the laughingstock of the NFL. Actually, up until this year, what could you have said about the Browns prior to 2018 that was remotely positive? We did have a glimmer of hope as fans in 2014 when the Browns started 7-4, but uh, yeah, we don't talk about that. To go back to the last time they were even relatively good, we gotta go back to 2007, a year of excitement and surprising stars rising up to the occasion. Now, this video is brought to you through the power of SeatGeek. SeatGeek takes tickets from all across the web and puts them into one area, making buying simple. They conveniently place these tickets on a scale from 1 to 100, so you know you're getting a good deal. Plus, you can get $20 off with your first purchase with promo code KTO. Shout out to SeatGeek for the sponsor. Now, let's talk some Browns football. After making it to the playoffs during the 2002-2003 season, things seemed to be headed in the right direction under head coach Butch Davis. But the team regressed. After a 3-8 start in 2004, Butch Davis would be fired, and the new era was set to begin. Romeo Cornell, the Patriots defensive coordinator during the first three Super Bowls, was announced as Cleveland's new head coach in 2005. He was going to whip the defense into shape, but the offense severely lacked playmakers. Plus, their first-round tight end Kellen Winslow Jr. would tear his ACL before the 2005 season. They ended up drafting standout wide receiver Braylon Edwards in the first round and local star quarterback Charlie Fry in the third round. They even picked up an option quarterback by the name of Joshua Cribbs as an undrafted free agent in hopes to turn him into some sort of specialist, maybe in the return game. 2005 and 2006 were rebuilding years, slowly putting together this team. The team didn't do too bad in 2005, but the regression in 2006 almost cost Romeo Cornell his job, and going into 2007, he was on the hot seat. It started like any other year for the Browns. Since Charlie Fry had yet to prove himself as a worthy starter, they took another quarterback in the first round. This year, it was Notre Dame's Brady Quinn. However, other moves like taking left tackle Joe Thomas with the third overall pick and bringing in free agent Jamal Lewis, who had haunted the Browns for years, were critical components of what was to come. You couldn't script a more Browns way to start a season. The starting quarterback job was to be decided by a coin flip. A freaking coin flip. That's the fairest way, said head coach Romeo Cornell. To decide who gets to call it, a game of rock, paper, scissors. This wasn't a game of kickball at recess. This was to decide who leads a professional football team worth hundreds of millions of dollars. The crazy part was their first round pick, Brady Quinn, wasn't even in the discussion. It was between Charlie Fry and former sixth round pick, Derek Anderson. Well, Charlie Fry ended up winning the job. And this is how the Browns 2007 campaign started. He went four of 10 for 34 yards and threw a pick and would be traded following the game. Hello, what'd you say? Charlie's dehydrated? Or Charlie Fry's been traded? Oh man, well that's news. The Browns already seemed to be in their usual form. Then, going into week two, this happened. We're in Cleveland, Ohio, a few moments away for the opening kickoff. The Browns and the Bengals, the Battle of Ohio. Anderson to the corner. Touchdown. Anderson over the middle. Touchdown. 25 yard line, Anderson, Winslow, touchdown Cleveland, how about these Browns? Anderson, pump fake, up the sidelines, has Edwards, Braylon Edwards, touchdown! Browns will go back to work, Lewis, nice little move, getting back inside, Jamal Lewis! Jamal Lewis will score! Blitz, and they pick it up, Anderson, oh! Is it a touchdown? Yes, there's the signal. The Browns offense had looked legit. Derek Anderson threw for five touchdowns and free agent acquisition Jamal Lewis ran for over 200 yards. The receiving core of Braylon Edwards, Joe Juravicious, and Kellen Winslow Jr. also looked great. 
this was possibly the start of something special. Who was Derek Anderson anyway? He was some late round pick by the Ravens in 2005, but was waived before the season even started. He had been with the Browns for two years, mostly as a third string quarterback. And it just made you wonder, was this game against the Bengals some sort of fluke? Over the next six games, the Browns would win four, jumping out to a record of five and three. All of a sudden, the Browns were a real threat. Their offense was unstoppable, averaging over 31 points a game since Derek Anderson became the starter. The playmakers they had been gathering for years were finally coming to fruition. The NFL on CBS from Heinz Field in Pittsburgh. The Browns rematch against the Steelers had become a critical season-defining game. Now only one game back, the Browns were now battling for possibly the number one seed in the AFC North. From the four, they fake to Lewis, toss, touchdown, Cleveland. They fake, they throw, they have another touchdown, it's Vickers. Edwards, a diving attempt that he's out of bounds, what a catch. The receiver got two feet inbounds, held onto the ball throughout the process of completing the catch. Therefore, it is a touchdown. <laughs> Look at Braylon Edwards. Cleveland does not charge for the team timeout. Field goal again. Roethlisberger throws. Woods wide open. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Third and ten. Stepping up. Now taking off. And again, the middle of the field is open. Roethlisberger inside the ten, inside the five. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. What a run by Roethlisberger. With all the momentum in the favor of Pittsburgh, this happened. Reed into the ball and he lines it down the field. It bounces and Cripps had it bounce off him. That's a live ball. Back by the goal line. He's got to come out with it. He's to the five. He angles. He's up the sideline. He's still running. He's to the 20, 25, 30. He's to the 40. He's down the sideline and angles left. He's to the 35, 30, 25, 20. He's got blockers in front. Five. Touchdown. Joshua Cripps turns disaster into a score. Unbelievable run, 100 yards for Cribs. Joshua Cribs is one of the few bright spots the Browns have had since returning to the NFL in 99. He was an option quarterback in college, and now he's going from an undrafted rookie to one of the most dangerous returners in the game. Come on now, that's legit. However, the Steelers would answer with a late touchdown, and Phil Dawson's kick with time running low would be short. This hurt. After being so close to victory over the team that blew them out to start the season, this would have been huge, and ultimately it hurt their chances of winning the division. Cleveland was resilient though, and they geared up for their second meeting with the Baltimore Ravens. The Browns did blow a 13 point lead in the fourth quarter, and with 26 seconds left, the Ravens took the lead. Somehow after a great return by Cribs and this desperation pass, Phil Dawson had a chance to redeem himself. For the tie, Dawson leans into it. Does he have enough? After discussion on the field, the field goal hit the top of the crossbar, went over and hit the extension on the backside, which in fact is a good field goal. It bounced back. The field goal was good. I have brought up this kick on another video, but it's just so crazy how it happened. It bounced off the upright, went through the goalpost, and then bounced off the middle crossbar and back out. Talk about rare occurrences. I don't think we'll see this again anytime soon. Cleveland would keep rolling, winning three of their next four and standing at 9-5 with a real shot of making the playoffs, they had to go play Cincinnati. After putting up 51 on them early in the season, their offense fell flat, and the Browns would lose to the Bengals. The Browns would win their final regular season game, ending the year at 10-6. This is the only season that they have eclipsed this win total since returning to the NFL. The worst part is they still didn't make the playoffs. Derek Anderson was a pro bowler, along with Josh Cribbs, Kellen Winslow, Braylon Edwards, and rookie Joe Thomas. I don't know what's more bizarre, that this season randomly happened, or that the success never replicated. The team completely fell off in 2008. Derek Anderson never looked the same, eventually getting hurt and benched. To top it off, Romeo Cornell would get fired following the season. This would abruptly end a once promising looking team. When you look at the careers of Derek Anderson, along with Braylon Edwards and Kellen Winslow, they all had one spectacular year in their career. Then they never did anything else. They were all out of Cleveland by the end of 2009. 
67 and 173. That's the record the Browns have had from 2004 to 2017. Since 2000, the Browns are dead last in total wins. With all the creative ways the Browns have lost games over the years, you can't help but wonder if they're cursed. When your standards for success are lowered as much as Browns fans have, it makes the wins that much more glorious. That's why 2007 was so epic. All but the game, they make four yards. This is the ball game for the Browns, and they give it to veteran Lewis. He's down to the 25, the 20, the 15, 10. Lewis, will that be denied? Touchdown, Cleveland. And Jamal Lewis just decides two, three, four Jets. That's just flat not enough.